Thank you for, for joining us here today, you know, Speaker Bowers. Um, I want to start with the question. Past week, um, the party, you know, decided to take the step of censuring you. Want to get your reaction to that? Well, uh, I think it's sad. And uh, the party of Kelly Ward is, is a, a party of pettiness and vindictiveness, and uh, they go out of their way to make sure that any of their enemies are duly noted and put in their box and, and go through the public shaming. And it's, it's kind of like the People's Court somewhere in Shanghai 70 years ago. It's, it's, so it's, it's, it's sad, and, uh, and it looks like my district is going to follow suit tonight. And, uh, and follow their lead and calling on my district to censure me and maybe the county will get in before the, some deadline to censure me as well. But it just indicates how far astray the, the party has gone. And, uh, so the fo follow up to that is, is like in explaining why, you know, they were taking this public rebuke of you. They listed off a number of bills. They said that you were on the wrong side of. We don't have time to go into all of those bills. There was no mention of your testimony in, the, in front of the January 6th committee hearing. Do you think you'd been sent, do you think you would be censured? Um, this would have happened if you didn't testify there. Uh, I, oh, I think that the, the, the commission, the, the committee, I think that testimony definitely has colored everything that's happened since as far as the Arizona Republican Party leadership, not the membership per se. I mean, I've had a, a lot of wonderful reactions from people about going and just telling what happened, you know, trying to be straight up about it, and, and that's what I hope to do. But yeah, I think that has something to do with it, and, that, and the the There's something that, to do with it. That or? has that the the the, the uh, candidate of their choice is coming to town, and and they're trying to get Dave all pumped up, my my opponent, and and to set the stage so that they're being forward thinking and slapping around everybody that might get out of line. And it's, uh, when you think of that, how we, we proclaim the Constitution and how important it is and how much we love it and et cetera. But please do what you're told and follow our lead and don't think anything other than what's the official party line coming out of Kelly Ward and, uh, and or Tyler Boyer or the, the whatever they call that leading council uh, and so I, you know, whatever, okay. It, it, you've brought up Kelly Ward a couple times now. Uh, let me ask you about her, your thoughts on her leadership of the party and where she has taken it, where it's where it started, where she. Well, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't call it leadership at all. I think it's uh, it's a mindset of, that is an extension of character. If your character has no breaking system, no discipline system, then everybody's an enemy, and you have to growl and snap and fight back if anybody gets out of line and and the ability to work with people and to get things done uh, is is obviously evident in what's happening to the party and its influence it's uh, it's sad i think it does have a corrosive effect on the the ability of people to to be uh, cohesive around any particular message or principle that used to be part of the party's vision back in John Rhodes and and Barry Goldwater and Kyle and uh, there's a whole litany of people who were true leaders in their party in in, in Arizona and to see all this uh, it, it's uh, it's 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 weird it's it's very strange is this a party that you recognize anymore uh, I recognize remnants in people of uh, people who have long time in the saddle, people who have principles, have a discipline, and, uh, but as far as, you know, a, a fixture, something that you would respect, I, I don't have any respect for, for the leadership of this particular party and, and how they have treated everybody in it. It's, uh, it's, it's hard. And so, and I know, me sitting here with you, being on the news is probably going to have some effect in my campaign. But somebody's got to be the grown-up around here and say so. This, uh, this is not acceptable. And, uh, and there are growing, people, growing numbers of people who are just said, I'm done with this party. Uh, we'll, we'll go independent for a while and see what happens next. But uh, they don't want to be associated 
with this kind of ferocious, uh, vindictive uh, mentality. And what what do you want to see happen? What how how should the party? I'd like everybody to sober up and ride the horse instead of falling off one side and then off the other, and realize that in order to be effective and move good policy, you have to work together. We really do need each other in order to have civilization. The civility of that word is being able to work together. Yes, I have my rights. You have your rights. Sometimes they get fuzzy on the edges, and we need to be able to accommodate differences in conscience and how we demonstrate that. And, and we just don't accept anything. There's a, a high level of intolerance in this particular state administration, and, uh, and it's bled down into the, into the LDs across the state. I think it's corrosive and dangerous to the ability of the party to really lead on policy. In the LDs, you're talking about the legislative right. districts. And you know, it, do you think this comes down to one person? Do you think it comes down? Oh, no, there's not one person up there. It's not clones. Mm -hmm. They just may act like it occasionally. But the idea that you can be justified in incivility, and that's one of the residues, I think, of the former president that he justified that, that that's legitimate public discourse. And I think that was hor horrendously corrosive in, in, in the psyche of America. It's and, very damaging. And, and you mentioned earlier that your own legislative district may follow suit and censure you. They what sent out the censure already on the, on, on the email on my account. It's just word for word what they did at the, at the state level. I don't think they bothered to even look at the bills. It's funny. Two of the bills, the 2289, I think, and the 2296 was the first one. We, that's the one I, I, I insisted it go to several committees. I think you assigned them to every single committee. Yeah, in, well, in, we didn't assign it to the that was fire an, that was management an, committee because that was kind of a, an ad hoc. But the, the point was, I'm not going to take away early voting. I'm not going to take away day or to make everybody vote day of. My district, 70% of them are over 60, standing out there in the sun on August 2nd. That's brilliant. And, and I, I think it might even be a little dangerous. I'm not gonna take away the machines which are extremely, uh, have been proven. For those who had just bothered to take the time that are proven to be accurate. And, and I'm not gonna make us all get 80,000 people to vote. And I'm sorry, to count the vote in a 24 hour period. And then, if we don't like it, the legislature can come back and, and negate the vote, a fundamental right that we once extended to the people, and in the same vote, take it away. That's what that bill is. If anybody look at that and say, seriously, folks, 90% of my district votes early. We don't want you to vote early anymore. Oh, no, they're not practicing that. But that's what they use as one of their uh, legitimizing uh, aspects of my character that they have to censure. Do you, see, you, you see some talk in the national media about, you know, maybe s steps like that are undemocratic. Do you see it that way? Well, oh, I, I just think that we have made such strides technologically and that we have lots of, we had lots of volunteer uh, forces wanting to help in the voting and count it and be a part of what is the backbone of our voting capacity is the volunteers and, and folks that work for our counting centers. Those people are intimidated and threatened and many of them very professional are showing up. I heard Steve this morning, Steve Richer. They're showing up but a lot of them just said, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna go through this anymore. And so we're gonna have to fill those gaps. So does it have an effect on democracy when you, when you insist on these things? I think it, it does. It, in, it inhibits the ability to vote. Mm -hmm. And not only are they censuring you, the party is calling for you to lose your election. They're calling for you right. to support your opponent. This is the ethics of the Kelly Ward administration, that now the, the state party, the county party, and the local legislative districts will not be neutral. They will pick right off the bat, which mine did on the first day of organization. The leadership said that we're here to to elect these three, and I'm sitting right there. It, it, was, uh, it, was, it was surreal that that's no longer part of the charge of the party is to get people united as Republicans and then take whomever our pick is into the general 
against whomever else the, the opposite side takes. What do you think some of the top candidates in the Republican Party, you know, governor's race, secretary of state's race, attorney general's race, they all push election fraud without any evidence to support that claim. Well, do you support, can you support any of those candidates in this primary or moving forward? The good thing about, about our, our faults is that some people have faults, but they have a lot of good qualities that still make them very, very supportable. But the idea of somebody just blanketly now, after two years-ish, saying it was all a fraud is just, uh, it's a juvenile reaction, and it, it's obviously to, to gin up the, the ongoing hatred, the ongoing suspicion, the ongoing uh, if feelings of loss when, when our guy lost. And, and uh, I, this is the result. It's confusion all across the board, and everybody's got to be poking at somebody. Yeah, and um, I believe we're getting close to, you know, uh, being out of time here, kind of wrapping up, and I just wanted to, you know, f- finally ask you, there's a lot of attention given to a statement you made to the, I sure. believe it was the Associated Press, saying that you would still support Donald Trump if he was the nominee. And, and I have I've said since time, many times, I typically do that when somebody's trying to pin me on a vote way ahead of time. Look. I, I support our party nominee. Well, I want another nominee, and I'm going to aggressively look for him and vote for him just as an individual American and glad to share my feelings about him. But I want somebody with character, somebody who will support the Constitution and not try to undermine it as the old, uh, the old president, the former president, did. He tried to undermine the Constitution of the United States in this vote. And, and how can I have a trust in such an individual? I don't want that guy. And, and he knows it. And he's made very clear that he doesn't want me either. <laughs> when he called for Dave Farnsworth, you know, I said, okay, hey, fantastic. Because he did endorse your candidate. Oh, absolutely, big time. And most of the endorsement was what a bad guy I was. So it's not personal that way. I have to step back and say, I have an obligation to, to pick the person that's best suited to carry the Constitution forward and the country forward. A lot of things he did good, but, and, and, and combine it, looking at what we're facing now with this current administration, we're gonna need some real leadership that can pull this country together. And I don't want it to be a thug. I want it to be somebody with character who can really lead. And um, one more question, this will be the last, I, I promise. You also were quoted recently saying that it would take a miracle um, it'd be, or it would be a miracle if you won your election. I believe in Senate. miracles. I stick with it. I don't just sit out. A guy told me we were stuck in Mexico years ago, deep mud. And I, I remembered an experience where I had prayed and a guy came along and pulled me out. So I prayed again. Well, the guy was with me, climbed out in the mud and got a big fence post and helped pry me out. And I said, man, I told you, I, I was praying away. And he says, look, sometimes prayer is great. But most of the time, there's a lot of work associated with it. <laughs> so that's what we're facing. We're trying to do all we can. So you still think you can pull this out then? Hey, who knows? It's heavily Trump, heavily Trump-centric, and, and they've been you know, pushing all the right buttons. But it's, a, it's, it's fun to be in this process, win, lose, or draw. We're going to do the best we can.